Hi, Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R, and today's demonstration is a question mark, which is a kind of butterfly that lives um, primarily on the east coast of the country. Um, I think they're very popular in New Jersey um, and around the mid-states and the coast there. Um, the reason why question mark, um, this is for a bugabet, this is for insects and being a larva and a caterpillar, it curls up very nicely into the shape of a Q. Now what we're going to do is I'm starting with, um, some cadmium red, I believe it's light and I'm going to start by these, we've got these nice fuzzy little uh, tips here, and the uh, question mark is um, primarily black and white, or um, with a, maybe little red hints on its body, and then it has very bright orange little uh, starry barbels that stick out of it. And when it, uh, when it goes from larva to adult, it, uh, is quite spectacular. It, it has marvelously, um, shaped wings. It's not terribly large. It's probably about, mm, two inches, um, three max, um, orange with, uh, brown spots, brown and black spots. And the same color it is as a, uh, a caterpillar it just kind of expands outward um, but as you can see it is a caterpillar so it fits nicely into the shape of the letter Q with the uh, any if we're, we're using any of the uh, beetle family it would be a lot more difficult to uh, to use but I'm, I'm starting with this technique is known as wet on dry and it's a technique that's much easier to control than um, wet into wet. And you can get very, very precise with this technique. So I like to use it. It's actually one of my favorite ways to work. And what I'm doing is that I've gotten water on my brush. Let's see here as I get under the camera. On this brush, you pick up water from your um, cup and then you'll pick up paint. The paint in my pans are dry at the moment. And you can buy dry pans of paint um, online or from, from the art store too. Most of the times you'll find that the paint either comes in two, in two kind of ways. It'll either come in tubes or in pans. And it's, it's either way is fine. It doesn't really matter. When you start with wet paint, you, you squeeze your, you'll squeeze your tubes into the pans and then it'll just dry in the pans. And the, the amazing thing about watercolor, the reason why it, it is such an, a wonderful medium, is that, you know, all you have to do is add water. And it reconstitutes. And in a very short time, it will dry as well. So you'll see as I'm painting how fast. And I'm sure if, if you're watching this now, you've probably played a little bit with watercolor yourself. And it dries very, very quickly. Unless you have like huge pools of water. The way I'm doing this, the, the um, paint dries extremely rapidly. It's like this paint that I just did right here is almost completely dry. There's something in um, gum arabic, which is the main glue in watercolor. It just is one of those amazing... Um, ingredients. It's magical in the way it works as a glue. All you have to do is add water and it reconstitutes. Now the thing is though too, here's the, the reason why it's best to use a good watercolor paper. The size in the paper is another kind of glue. It holds the uh, fibers in the paper together and so that size in the paper also will accept and repel both the watercolor. It's like if you've ever, um, um, there are different ways 
of using watercolor it's you'll notice i didn't stretch my watercolor paper here i'm using a canson block this is um montfall i think is the the way you pronounce the uh the name of it but it is a four inch by six inch um block of paper it's got glue on all four sides and then there's a place where you can put a pen knife in to uh to get the pen out i'm sorry to to separate the paper from each other that was a really good get the pen out okay to separate the the paper the sheets of paper from each other and otherwise the um glue around the edges keeps it from buckling and it, it more or less acts like stretcher paper okay um this area in here is spotted black and white with dots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some purple. And purple is one of your colors that'll go dark extremely fast. And if you wanna get the illusion of um, purple, or excuse me, black, if, you don't, if you're one of those people who don't like the idea of using black, I am going to be using black on this. But I'm starting with the purple. Primarily because um, when you're doing watercolor, you want to go from your lighter colors to your darker colors. So you want to keep it going transparent. It's like right now everything looks a little bit on the pastel side. And I will get darker and darker and darker and darker. And you want to start light. You want to start with that pastel -y quality because you can always go darker. But when you go darker, it's not impossible to go lighter, but it's harder. And you, the only way you can get back a true white once you go dark is by using an X-Acto knife blade. And I will do that occasionally. Um, because I, when you get used to um, scraping away paper, you use a, an X-Acto knife and a kneaded eraser, and you can get a very good, um, you can get it down to where it's, it's, the paper's almost smooth again, so that, um, it, I'm not afraid, I've done it enough times, that's the other thing, you practice, um, fixing your mistakes, that's the best way, once you learn how to fix your mistakes, you won't be afraid to make your mistakes, and that's, a lot of, 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 painting and watercolor are definitely happy mistakes okay and this guy's speckled all over the place he almost looks like a zebra on his body so i'm getting that purple in first in there. and like i said i'm going to go over that that purple with both um a little bit of red before i throw on the black and the black will t take it all the way to its darkest color and then um, when I'm all done with this too, I will go back in one more time after the painting's done and I will tighten up all my line work with another round of pen work. Okay, we're just about done with the purples there. And what I would highly recommend if you're ever painting insects or animals or anything that's realistic, um, have material you know all you have to do is google and hit images and you can have you know a hundred images right before your eyes of reference material um <laughs> i swear the internet has made it so easy for everyone uh, before the internet i am that old yes i have been around since before the internet um i have a morgue literally what you used to do is you used to take magazines and you would um just collect magazines of everything and anything with photographs so you could have um, reference material now right here th these are his eyes this is his rear legs these are his eyeballs right here or her eyeballs we don't know whether this thing is a male or a female at this state of the game now when once it comes out of its uh, pupa and I do believe question marks do have a pupa different types of butterflies have um, different types of uh, cocoons they, when they go through metamorphosis but um question marks definitely have a pupa and i'm giving right now i'm, I'm attaching this is alizarin crimson 
that I'm adding to the legs because his legs are like a kind of a dark orange. So I'm laying down the alizarin crimson first and then that will give it the color a little bit of a richer, darker tone. When I'm going to come in, I'm going to lay yellow on top of that. And you can see while I'm, I'm laying this alizarin crimson over the violet or the purple, I'm getting a much richer color. And that's one of the things that, that I love about watercolor is it will give you colors that you would not have intended. And um, one of my favorite mixes is that we're not doing on this one, but um, mixing magenta, a magenta with a forest green, and you will get the most amazing purples and blues out of that. Um, it's a good idea to, you know, when, when you start working with watercolor, literally try to mix. Now, I'm, I'm sorry, this is, excuse me for starting and stopping, but I'm about to put some um, cadmium yellow on top of that orange or on top of that alizarin. And that's going to give me an interesting orange. It's going to give me a, a more brilliant orange than if I had just mixed um, cad and yellow together because there's a little bit of purple in that orange. And oddly enough, um, it doesn't gray it. It makes it, it just, it, it's like some of the, the purple comes through under the orange. And you can see it gives it almost, um, when it dries, it'll have a little bit of an iridescent quality to it that I had not necessarily intended, but will come into existence because the paint's colors lying next to each other and you can see too it's getting a little muddy in there and that's okay because um, we're going to take a little black in there and also while you're painting the colors will change they will always change they usually go whatever you lay down for the most part purple is the exception to just about every rule um, they will change from um, um, a darker color to a lighter. They'll almost always dry a little bit lighter than darker. Purple, per, like I said, got to be careful with the violets just because there is a hue to them, not, or I'm sorry, there's a value to the color along with the hue. And they already start out with a rather dark value. So you're always going to have a little bit of problem with the purples. Okay, I'm going to do his or it's, I keep on calling them he's. I think it's because I'm a she. I'm more attracted to he's. I have no idea. But anyways, um, this particular bug, we're going to paint its eye right now. I'm going to keep it light, like up in here, because I want to have a highlight. And so what I'll do is I'm painting, where I'm not adding paint is where I'm thinking I might want it to be white or I might want a highlight in the end. And usually um, you want like an area for reflected light around the edge and you want wherever your, your light's hitting. So I'm saying my light is going to be hitting here. I want it a little bit lighter. Now that um, they don't really have a glossy eyeball. So it's not going to be a total highlight, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for that paint to dry real fast. And then I'm going to come in with um, a little bit darker here and probably lay in a drop of water there to get it a, like a light pink rather than that, uh, that the uh, really intense blizzard right now. And this is the head, obviously. These, these are the eyeballs. This is the tail. And it, like I said, it has little spikes all over it. And the spikes aren't hard. The spikes are actually soft. But I think more than anything else, they're there to tell other um, predators that it doesn't taste good. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of Payne's Gray. And Payne's Gray is a blue gray. Um, I like it a lot because it, it's very much like a uh, Prussian blue. You probably get Payne's Gray if you mix um, Prussian blue and black. Um, I don't know the exact formula for Payne's Gray. This is what I'm painting with it right now is Payne's Gray. And you can tell I'm going pretty dark. 
And what I'm doing is, is this area is still a little damp. So it's doing a little bit of mixing in with the, uh, the paint that's there. Now this part is really dry. So you can see I'm leaving behind little dots. You'll, you'll know where your area is wet and dry um, by how it mixes in. Now, I didn't like that. You can always blot with your paper, paper towel. If it went too dark and I didn't like it, you go in with your paper towel and just blot it out. And if you, you feel that's kind of muddy, let's see here. Yeah. I'll show you how to fix that. All right. You can go in and you can scumble and scumble. I made a mistake. Ah. And what I'm doing, I'm literally scrubbing with my brush. Now, this is a, a Series 7 Sable, um, number two. And there. See, you can, I'm almost down to the paper with just scumbling the paint and sucking it out with my paper towel. Now you won't get this exactly pure white. If you wanted that pure white, what you do is you'd let it dry and you'd scrape it away with an X-Acto knife. And I just did that for you to show you, you, you know, you can make a mistake. You can go back in and let's, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit more. Cause right now it's still a little wet. I'm gonna go paint a little bit of the other. But you'll notice too here where the, my, my, um, Paints gray is drying where it looked really muddy before. See how we've got a variety of color going on in there. And the thing is, again, with anything in watercolor, if you, like I said, if you find you get something where you've overdone it and it's too muddy, stop, pull it out. Let it dry, go back in again. Um, it's always best to keep your paper as fresh as color as possible and your colors as fresh as possible. And not do that but the reason why I'm bringing that up is so that you don't worry about doing it it's best to go in and make a few mistakes and learn how to correct them and then when you go in and do it again you know how to fix them the next time around okay And you'll notice this area here I'm leaving white because it's it's spotted black and white. So I'm, I'm leaving some nice open areas of white to give that illusion. And that's what you're doing too. As an artist and when you're painting something, you're, you're creating the illusion of what the animal looks like. It's, you know, if you want a photograph, take a photograph. This is your impression so that when somebody looks at it and they go, oh yeah, I know that's a question mark larva I know the those fuzzy things okay now I'm gonna go much darker here now I've mixed a little bit of purple and alizarin together together to give that darker hue And then I'm going to mix in a little bit of red with that because I want these, these, the putties to be more red. And I'm giving kind of a dark line, give them a little bit of volume. Let's see. And that was a little heavy there, so I'm going to do a little blotting there. Oh, yeah, I like that better. There we go. And again, the red is very heavy pigment, so it's going to it's gonna lay down a little bit hard and heavy there. Now, I am going to come in with a little bit of... I think this is lamp black. Mars Black is the glossy one and thinner one, and Lamp Black is the heavier one. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just stipple. By stippling, I mean I'm going dot, 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 And the thing is, is that when anybody ever tells you, no black and watercolor, um, black is a color. 
I'm sorry. The black, even the blackest blacks in watercolor are not black. They're not totally black. You, if you want real black, you use pen and ink. <laughs> your ballpoint pen, your your India ink, those are that's where your your real dark blacks are going to come from. But black is a color, and I'm I am of the watercolor class that says you can use black if you got a black color use black you know it's like it's black and white is a color as well um depending on which class of color you know or whether you're talking about pigment or light if you're talking light white is made up of all color um if you're talking pigment usually black is made up of you know carbon <laughs> it's charcoal how you get black but the thing is is that um it's i know that there there are the the school of watercolor that says never use black i'm not i use black i think it's perfectly fine to use black so it's like i'm not a purist but then again i'm using ballpoint pen for my um for my line work here for the queue so now it looks really like a question mark because they are all polka dotty and black on the one side and then they have like i said little red legs and their their heads again they'll go from bright red to maroon to sometimes blackish maroon and we're just about done with this one so that's that is our Q question mark and I'm gonna do one more little thing here before we end tonight I'm gonna to show you how to correct your mistakes I'm gonna move the palette over the side here just so it's out of the way um, we have a couple of well my brush flicked a couple of little specks of color here and there's an ink there's an ink line right there that I don't want when and this is what I'm talking about this is you know your standard exacto knife and I'm taking the flat of the X-Acto knife and just using it almost like you would sandpaper and you're just scraping off like the very top layer of the paper. And over here, I'm taking, there's this one pen line right there. And I'm just scraping that away, letting it drop. Now, here's the thing. This painting is dry. You know, I'm putting my finger over it. This painting is totally dry. And what we've done, again, this is wet on dry paper. And that's how we do that particular technique. And I'm going to just, I'm, I'm looking at it now, and I want to, to pop up those, the, the little um, cool things. I really should find out what you actually call those before I do a video on a question mark and say what are those little barbel they're 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 basically things that say to animals predators that want to eat it don't eat me I'm not a tasty dish um it's also to you know if something tries to eat it that's its size those I'm sure will not taste good in the mouth of the mandible or whoever crunches down on it um and i think that's that's mostly what those marvelous little antennae type looking things are but they're soft i mean they're, they're not hard if you've ever um i'm i'm a big one for uh i i like to play with bugs i mean i was one of those kids um i my first 10 years of my life i spent in michigan and i couldn't resist picking up the woolly bears or what I called wo woolly bears, you know, in the autumn, they're, they're everywhere that they're all fuzzy. And they're the, the larva of a, a moth and they're just too fun to play with. Just have to pick them up and let them crawl over your hand. Yeah, I think we're about done here. Um, I think I'm going to put just a little more black 
on the underside of this of his head here. And that's basically our Q question mark. Now, what I will do later, let's see, and I'll just do a little bit here so you can see, is um, say like this antennae here. I will go back in and sharpen those up. And I'll heavy up the outline because this is supposed to be for an alphabet so that that the it's an illustration technique where you you want to heavy up this outline here so where I've made it kind of a loose line before I'll go in and just he heavy up that entire outline and all, it'll really crispen up the details. And I might even go in with maybe a little bit more watercolor for some shadow to give. If, if I find that there's an area where it's not round enough, if I want to give more body to this area, say I felt that, you know, I, it doesn't feel like it's thick enough and I want to give it a shadow maybe here and a shadow over there. I might do that one more time before I'd consider it completely done. And then what I'll do is I'll scan it into the computer. And if there are any other mistakes that, that uh, need fixing that I've missed or I wanted to accentuate a color or two, um, I can do that on computer. So there are no mistakes that cannot be fixed. Because for the most part, and you know, unless you're giving your watercolor painting away to a friend as a gift, which is always a nice thing to do. They're never going to see your mistakes. You see your mistakes, they don't. They can't see them. All they see is a beautiful painting. And if you're um, putting this on uh, Instagram or Facebook, um, it'll look 10 times better. It always looks 10 times better um, as a photograph as it does in real life. And that's just because... Um, all the anomalies of paper and the absorption of, of light get changed when you throw it onto the computer. But again, I will probably spend, like I said, I'll probably spend at least an hour to 45 minutes working on getting, getting the image more um, cleaned up. I'll probably give it a little bit more of a side here. And like I said, detail out all the, the little barbels and stuff. But that's it. That's a Q question mark. Thank you for stopping by. Um, please subscribe and like it and uh, come back for the next one. Appreciate you being here. Bye-bye.